and welcome back. So today we're going to be going over how to do tweens. Tweens are from the animation term in betweening. It means to blend from one object to another or from one value to another. So today we're going to be using tweening to make the hit reaction on this damageable object maybe a little bit more interesting. Now before we get into tweening there is something that we need to go over. So we're going to be using inheritance here today. So inheritance, if you go over to the damageable node, you'll see it extends node. And what we're going to be doing is creating a node that extends damageable node instead of node. And this carries along all of the functions and all of the methods that are within those nodes and we'll do it in C sharp and Godot script and real quick I'm just going to go over that in both of them before we get started with programming tweens. So real quick we're going to go ahead and make our scripts and we're going to call them damageable tweening nodes. All right, so let's start with the Godot script side of things. So we're going to just go up here and say extends damageable node. Now we can go ahead and override various functions, much like we've overridden the ready or process function. We can override on hit function. And we're just going to do something real simple here. We're just going to print test. And it's important to note that in order to call the original on hit method, you have to type in the keyword super. And that's going to call the actual damageable node that this is inheriting from on hit function. And let's get in here into 3D and set up the Godot script variation. So we've set them both up with the Godot script versions of the their respective scripts. But instead of damageable node, I've selected damageable tweening node. And it should do the exact same thing as normal, but you can see it has the words test written in console. And that is basically executing this code and then go uh, going and executing damageable nodes on hit. Now let's do the same thing for C sharp real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right up here to where it says node and we're going to say damageable node. And you'll notice if we go over to damageable node, I've added the keyword virtual. Now, what virtual does in C-sharp, it's a little bit different than in Godot script. Not all functions are immediately available to the children of those nodes. They are only available if we type in the keyword of virtual. So we can go right here and say public override, and we have the on hit function right there. And this is how you call the super, like in Godot script, but in C-sharp script. And we'll just say test C-sharp there. And we'll hit build and let's go back to Godot and go ahead and implement the C sharp variation of the scripts. And now we have test C sharp printing into the console. Now we can actually get started on the tweening side of things. Now tweens are very powerful in Godot and we're not going to go over all of the features. The documentation will be in the description, but there's a lot of different things you can do with them. And I have done much more complex things with them today. We're just going to make it bounce, rotate and scale and then return back to its normal shape. So we're going to go ahead and jump in script and get started with the position first and then we'll do the rest. All right. So first off, we're going to go ahead and declare a new variable. And this one is going to be a transition type or a tween dot transition type. This is going to be how the tweener decides how to move to the target. You have a lot of different options here, far too many to go over in this video, but rest assured that this is how the visual language of a tween is really defined and feel free to play with all the different options in this. It's a lot of fun to just mess around. We're also going to declare a private variable that will be a, a vector three and it'll be the original position of the mesh reference. This is important. So we get the object back to where it started from when the animation is done. And we're just going to declare this in the ready function. And remember, because we inherited from damageable node, we have access to all of its functions. So one of its functions was a mesh reference. So we can just go ahead and call that directly here. And we're just going to say original position equals mesh reference dot global position. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new tween or a new variable in 
Godot script, and we're going to call the create tween function. This is available in any node-based object, and you cannot use the new tween or tween.new in Godot script to create a tween, or else it will not function. And then we're going to go ahead and call the set trans function, and, that's, and we're going to insert the transition type variable that we created. And finally, we're going to get to tweening something. So the way you tween things is you call various, you have tween property and tween method, and also a couple others, but we won't get into those. So we're going to call the tween property function. And this takes a couple of inputs. One, the first one, is what object you're calling this on. So it'll be the mesh reference reference. Then it's what variable you're calling it on via a string, which is the name of the variable. And this is the Godot script name. So it'll be global underscore position. This can be a bit tricky if you're used to C sharp, but a little bit of Googling can usually sort it out. Next, it's going to take whatever the end result is. So in this case, it'll be the original position and then adding a new vector three with one in the Y that it's just going to move it up one meter straight up. And then it will take how long it will take to get there. So we're going to just use the flash duration, which is another variable from the damageable node. And we're going to divide it by two. That way we spend half the time going up and then we'll spend half the time coming back down. And next, we're just going to copy and paste that tween property, and we're going to make a new one for the return journey. And the return journey is a bit simpler. We're just moving it back to the original position. And last but not least, we're going to need to go ahead and call the new tween dot play function. And this is going to kick off the tween. All right, and we're back in Godot. We do have a transition type here. Feel free to play around with these and see how they look, but let's go ahead and hit play. And you see it just bounces up every time we shoot it. All right. With this, we don't just have to go up and down. We can also do other interesting things. So we're going to jump back in script, and we're going to add rotation and scale. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of variables here. And the first one is going to be a scale size. So this will be what we multiply the scale by in order to bump up its size. And we're also going to export a float variable, which is going to be the rotation degrees. And this is going to be kind of the maximum rotation in any axis that it will do when wiggling around. Following this, we're also going to need to duplicate the original position vector. And we're going to make an original rotation and an original scale. The original rotation is going to be the global rotation degrees of the mesh reference. The reason why I do degrees is just because it's a little bit easier to work with. A lot of times you will need to just go into global rotation and that's going to be in radians, which is a problem for another day. So we go ahead and assign those the exact same way we assigned the original position. We just get the default position rotation and scale or rotation degrees. And following this, we're going to go ahead and first off, we're going to create a little divider. And this is just going to be a comment on both of them. This is going to help define the upswing and the downswing of the animation. So the top part is it going up and expanding. And then the bottom part is it coming back to its original position. Now, we're going to use the new tween dot parallel function here. And what this is going to do is take the previous tween and the next tween, and it's going to make them both run at the same time. And the next tween in this case is going to be the global rotation degrees. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the current rotation and multiply it by a random vector. And in this case, that random vector, we're going to have to go ahead and create a, what is called a random number generator. This is not a very complex thing, but essentially you call it and you call the, the randomized function on it, and then you can just use it to create random numbers. And the easiest way to do this is with the random F range. But there's something very important here, and that is the wrap F function. And the reason why that's important is that it allows any number past, say, negative 180 degrees to instead of going up to wrap back around to 
zero or 180 degrees in the other direction, however you set it up. So in this case, we're going to set it up to the maximum and the minimum being negative 180 and positive 180. If you don't do this, your animations will warp oddly when adding or subtracting ranges from them. You end up with this jagged look to it. And you'll notice we do a little bit of indention here. This is just going to allow us a little bit more readability. It does not impact performance whatsoever. And I encourage you to do this whenever you are writing code. It will help you organize your thoughts. And within the random F range, we're just going to use the negative and the positive of rotation degrees. And you'll see here, I actually have to go look for the answer on how to do parallel because I forgot about it on the C sharp side. Neg regardless, um, back over here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create another tween property. Just copy and paste the previous and we're going to make this one scale. This one's a little bit simpler. All we have to do is take the original scale and multiply it by the scale size variable. Now that we've got all that, we can go ahead and hop down below the divider and we can bring everything back. And so all we're going to do is just copy and paste all that again. And instead of changing any variables, what we're going to do is we're going to return them to their original states. So this will be original rotation and original scale. Far simpler. All right, we're back in Godot. And we have a couple new variables here. So let's go ahead and enter in functional numbers for those. And let's hit rotation degrees to about uh, 10. And let's set this to elastic, and you'll see now it bounces up into those very sharply and then bounces back and kind of springs on the return journey. If we slow down the flash duration, about 0.5, we should be able to see this a little bit better. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, uh, let's set that to sign. So there's some house cleaning here. When you fire off tweens, it's important to remember that those tweens do complete. So if we hit it multiple times at the same time, you can see that the material is reverting back to the original halfway through. And what it's trying to do is complete the tween while another tween is affecting the same object. Obviously, that is not ideal. So what you can do is you can keep track of the tweens you've created and stop them if they are still in existence when the next round comes through. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to jump back in script now. All right, we're back in Godot. 
And now that should resolve our issues with the flashing turning off at the wrong time. Now, mind you, the tween is based off of its current position when you hit it. So you can shoot the object up into the air a little bit here. And that is not half bad. A little bit shorter time results in a bit more bouncy, arcadey feel. For now, this will be all we do with tweens. Next week, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I may end up working with audio as that is something that I have not touched. So I think that next week we'll work on getting a impact effect and a blaster effect, and we'll tie those into code and get them calling. I also wanted to let you all know that I'm currently working on a personal project. I've been working on it for about a month now, or a little bit more than a month, and I'm very excited with the progress. I'm very excited to show it to all of you. I will be showing it off in the near future. It's not quite ready yet, but I will show it off before I go on my trip in March. And for everyone new around here, thank you all for coming around and sticking around and listening to my videos. And regardless, I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Thank you.